Hello everyone, welcome to yet another Vintage Cube Draft. Let's see what we can do today. Yesterday I had a sweet um, black-white with some splashes deck. But uh, yeah, let's see where the draft takes us today. I feel like Mystic Confluence is just better than what else is in this pack. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like Dak, I like Glimmerlands, I like Preacher. But yeah, Mystic Confluence, oh, oh Lauren Reveal I guess I should mention. We can start on the Mystic Confluence, see if we can get a nice control deck together. Um, yeah. Other than the, those cards I mentioned, I mean, we have some good lands, of course. Workshop, but I would never start my draft on a workshop. I can't imagine the, the pack that would make that correct. Okay, so Source of Plowshares, very nice follow-up. Uh, Source of Plowshares is even better than my first pick. Blue-White is a good color pair if I end up in a... Somewhat reactive deck with some good proactive elements. If Pi wasn't here, I would probably go like Talent here or Brainstorm. Like there's, there's a big drop off from uh, from Plow basically. So yeah, very happy with second pick Plow. Blue white. So ideally, we play both of these cards. Um, it is possible to play Swords on the Splash, but yeah, let's see. I usually like drafting around my first few picks. But every once in a while, I abandon my first few picks. First few picks because of basically what the draft gives me. Hmm. So speaking of that, what does this pack give me? I think the best card here is Birds of Paradise. I do love that card. Birds is good. It casts Plow. It casts Mystic Confluence. From there, it's Narset. I don't think Narset is that strong. Just too many creatures that kind of kill it right away. There's also a blue land, good blue white land. Oh, huh. good blue white land that helps me cast both my spells. If I take birds, it's with the intention to become main green. So that would most likely mean um, green blue slash plow in case I want to play all of my cards. Or I could just take the archive right away. Hmm. I'm actually going to go for birds here, very close with the archive and Narset um, afterwards. Hmm. So, funnily enough, I, had I gone for uh, the Blue-Eyed Land, I would probably go, like, Emperor or Retrofitter now. But I think now that I've picked green, I like Avacyn's Pilgrim. Like, it's a one-man accelerant that casts Source to Plowshares, so what's not to like? Let's add Avacyn's Pilgrim to the mix. So, speaking of my color combination, green, blue, splash, plow. Hmm, Uro is tempting, but usually my green decks have a hard time filling the yard, so maybe I'm just supposed to go Triome here. It's a blue-green land that might cast a black spell in the future. Yeah, let's, let's take a land here and see what happens. Hmm, okay, now we kind of ran out of, you know, good stuff to be doing. This is where... I think it gets pretty important to read the draft. Like, is blue even open? That could be the first question. I think I'm supposed to take Novice Inspector. I think it's the best card in the pack. Not confident in that, but... If white is open, I should definitely move in. Yeah, no blue cards here, but a bunch of white. So it looks like we're going to be playing the good old color combination, the white-green. Hmm. This is probably... I'm probably supposed to take Adversary here. Adversary is, you know, decent on turn two, great on later in the game. Mm, now what? Best card is probably like Toxic Deluge. Cryptic Code is decent. Hmm. Horse then, but I'm not sure I'm gonna. I need, I need like Flash, Natural Order for that card to be awesome. And also go recruit. Recruiter. Yeah, this is actually a tough pick. I'll try and stick with white and go Prismatic Ending, but I could see uh, Cryptic Code being the right pick in that pack. Okay, so we wheel Third Path. Yeah, I guess I'll just take Third Path. That's just a solid white card. Hmm. Yeah, I, I swear I don't do this on purpose, but we, it looks like we ended up in white once more. Oh, sure. Yeah, I mean... Might even be mono white at this point. 
Let's see about the ending. Let's see about the green cards. Hmm. Kind of weird. Yeah, there's even an 11th. Or is this 12th? 13th, 14th? Yeah, 12th pick Emperor. That's just unreasonable. So maybe we're supposed to be mono white. Yeah, more creatures that I will happily play. And I have even, once I'm white, I've even first picked it before, which is kind of funny. Uh, yeah, I mean, pretty nice first pack. At least we, we, we kind of figured out what was open, and that proved to be white. A white black land we might play, who knows? So right now I'm looking at mono white. Green is good if my mana gets awesome. I don't think it's that good. I mean, yeah, the mana just adds uh, insecurities and inconsistencies all around if, if it's not, like, super consistent. I would have to take something like Verdant or Horizon Canopy here to make sure I play those cards. But I think I'm supposed to take Ancient Tomb, especially if I end up Mono White. Okay, let's first pick Ancient Tomb, pass the Mana Drain. I'm not... The biggest fan of that, obviously, but let's see. I'm trying to trying to get the mono white to work. The color of this cup looks funny on the green screen. Huh. So now medium white card. Could take Temple Garden and start working on that acceleration. Hmm. Taking Temple Garden, or simply just taking the Staff. Staff is good with Usher, it's good with Emperor, it's good with a lot of things. Yeah, I'm just gonna stick to, try and play Mono White here. Ooh, nice Skull Clamp. I love Skull Clamp in most decks, but it's uh, especially good in Mono White. Let's say we were still flirting with the green, we could consider no Ignoble, but it's not close to Skull Clamp, so pretty, pretty good. Hmm, so here's the problem with being, or trying to be, uh, monocolored, but maybe we can find Red Splash for Athari later. Pack doesn't have anything else, okay. Okay, okay. So, here we have a red land for Athari, so let's take that over and that much. Jetmir's Garden, over... I mean, I would probably play Timeless Dragon, but it's not amazing or anything. If I get enough, like, just random duels, like actual alpha duels, I can maybe play Prismatic Ending if it's realistic for me to cast it for two or three throughout a, you know, medium to, to longer game. Okay, so Cathar Commando. That's decent, like... It's awesome to be to be almost mono white. So yeah, I'm just happy to pick up any like solid card for that strategy. Hmm. Touch of the Spirit Realm is not too exciting, but I think it's better than speculating on black. That would be my second black duel. Could open some doors, but I'm just gonna take touch. Here's a get lost. It's not anything to write home about, but it but it's actually a solid uh a solid card. Hmm. So white, white was open once more. I think it's pretty important to, at least if you're drafting to win, like I will be at the at the mocks in a in a month's time, which is basically what I'm what I'm testing for these days, just to get as many reps in as possible to hopefully uh, be able to navigate that draft. But what I was trying to say was, it's important to. You could easily be like, oh, yeah, and I don't want to draft white again. I want to go this route. Like, that's cool if, you, if your main goal is just to, you know, have fun or variety or whatever. Um, but I'm trying, to, I'm trying to discipline myself here and actually do what I, what I am reading that the draft wants me to do, right? So I think maybe I can fill a whole deck with white cards. But it would be fine to splash Othari off of, let's say, one mountain at the most. I really don't want to put mountains in my deck, but if I have to put one mountain in my deck, it's probably worth it. 
And then there's the Mystic Confluence Birds of Paradise sitting in my sideboard. But that's how it goes sometimes. Um, so let's see. Sentinel, in case I get, like, enough green, is just, it's a good splash. So is Teferi. Wonder which is better. I already have a green, so maybe that's what I'm supposed to do. I don't know. I don't see myself playing Sentinel unless I get, like, four free sources. Let's say two fetches and a Savannah or something. Yeah, this pack doesn't have anything for me. Let's say I was playing at the Mox. What would I rather not face? And I think the answer to that card is Tinker Portal. I believe I even passed the Tinker this pack, so pretty, pretty good hate pick in a uh, pod environment. Balance came back around. I can't really use that card, but I'll take a Relic. And then there's like the green pack that made me question life. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty average. I mean, I'm happy that I found a good seat, but I don't have any, like, I don't have any power. I don't have any insane um, power level either. Timeless Dragon was a decent pickup. I mean, if I go get Garden, paying two mana to get a tap land, that's virtually like a three mana for a duel, which isn't amazing in a deck that wants to curve out a lot of the time, but yeah. It's, it's it's a fine it's a fine threat. Like mana fixing and threat in one, it's fine. As always, thanks so much for joining me. It's awesome to get to to play some magic for an audience. Ooh, okay, okay. So the back street fifteenth pick. I mean, I have two lands here. So let's say I get. How do I know? I open Orcish Bowmasters, then I can take it, which is not nothing. So yeah, let's see what we open here for the third and final pack. Game uh, pack two was pretty slow, but whew, we're off to a great start here with a Sol Ring. Yeah, what a pickup. Sol Ring. One of the best, if not the best card I could open. Arrakis is not going to wheel. I don't think I'm wheeling anything out of this pack. I mean, the Hallowblade. I, I missed that on first glance. Okay. Yeah, Sol Ring improves any deck, and uh, this is no different. Kind of cool I have Sol Ring and Ancient Tomb, so I can maybe turbo out some stuff in more, more games than usual. Take advantage of stuff like Skull Clamp, I was about to say, but then I noticed the Mana Crypt. Holy crap. Solaring into Mana Crypt. This could be exactly what this deck needs to be, you know, top tier. Have to pass Smuggler's Copter. I love that card. Everybody knows that. If you ever watched a video of me drafting, I often end up with that card in my deck. I think it's so good. Solaring and Mana Crypt. Yeah, now I just want solid cards. And this is even better than a solid card. Wow, Solitude. Oof. I mean, I love the Sacred Foundry for the Othari, but Sol Ring into Crypt into Solitude, that's, uh, that's quite the payoff. So here, there's, funnily enough, there's a Mind Twist with two sources in the sideboard and a bunch of acceleration. Is that better than good old Elite Spellbinder? That's the question. Is that better than good old Elite Spellbinder? I'll try and take the Mind Twist. So now I have two Black Lands and a Timeless Dragon. So that's like almost three sources, I would say. The thing is, I still need to work a little bit on my red. I mean, both, to be honest. Both red, uh, red and black. So hopefully I get like some smooth land that helps my mana base. <laughs> no good white card. But there's a Silent Clearing and Sunbaked Canyon. So maybe it's just Sunbaked Canyon. I think I need the red more. 
If I had better black, I could take Vampiric Tutor to like double up on the Mind Twist, but not this time. It looks like Prismatic Ending is back. Because now I have like some duels to make it more flexible than just killing ones and zeros. There's a Fracture that I can't play, so I'll just take Play Splicer and be reasonably happy. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Do I need this? One, two, three black. Maybe I do. Eh, it's kind of sad. But uh, yeah, I think I have to take that land. It's also two green for the Sentinel. But I don't want to go four color or white. I think this is this is where I'm supposed to be. White, Splash, Othari, and Mind Twist. No land to help me here, so I guess I'll take Ephemerate. I'm really not big on that card, but maybe it can, you know, counter a removal spell here and there. Do a little bit of damage with Solitude, Third Path, maybe. Let's see. Hmm. I need t 12 more cards. So that's like a small handful of playables. Okay, I'll take Selfless Spirit, bread and butter card for the deck. Again, if my black was better, I could consider Vindicator push, but I think it's good. When I'm, when I'm only splashing like one card, I don't want to put too much pressure on the mana. I did wield the, the Seasoned Hallow Blade, so definitely adding that to the fold. Kind of the same thing as uh, the Selfless Spirit. Nothing to write home about. Great bread and butter card to, uh, you know, make, make sure the deck does its thing with consistency. There's a Sarah Paragon, Red White Land, and Samwise. Okay, okay, I'll take the Red White Land. Okay, okay, you got me. Guardian, not bad. So right now I have 10 plus, so I need like one more playable in a perfect world. Double Graveyard Hate in the main deck? I don't think that would be... Ideal, but not horrible either. It would be just fine, randomly insane in some matchups. Alter. Weathered Wayfair. I don't think I'm playing that card. I can port it in on the draw. Okay. I think playing 14 lands is going to be fun. Just adding 7 planes and calling it a day, I believe. Let's see. Boom. 7 planes. Let's count black sources. One, two, three, four ish. That's fine. Let's count red sources. One, two, three, almost four. Same thing. Yeah. Okay. So we submit kind of a kind of a strange deck here. Lots of reliance on the accelerants here, but I think that's okay. Yeah, I'm excited to play this deck. That'll do it for the draft portion. See you guys in a bit. All right, here we are. We're on the draw. We have a mana crypt in our opener, so should be an easy keep. Let's see, what can we do here? We can go Porcelain Legionnaire. Like, it's not really exciting, but... Ooh, the best spell peers in the universe. For sure. Like, that just makes my hand unplayable. Oof, that was brutal. Brutal stuff. And the opponent knows. So what's my play there? If I get to go Legionnaire, then I go Selfless... I mean, I have some plays, right? That's the, that's the whole point. Okay. So that is also a play. Let's play Legionnaire. Going with a nice Jeskai mana base here. See if we get Rest Toad. Yeah, I, I thought about that card, but it was uh, it was not a pleasant thought. So maybe my opponent's on some kind of Jeskai uh, Splinter Twin. Apparition. 
Opponent can't trips into mountain from map. Hmm. Let's see. So I want to get rid of that card, but I can't right now, which is unfortunate. So maybe I just go Ranger. Get Novice Inspector S. Opponent developed Celestial Colonnade last turn. I think it's going to be hard for me to recover after the, the Pierce on the Mana Crypt and missing land drops for maybe just one or, one or two turns. Can't remember. I think it's going to be tough. Cool thing is, when I kill the Apparition, I get a 3 3, which is not nothing. There's a palace jailer on top of my opponent's deck. Ooh. Can't say I'm a big fan of that card right now. Okay. So now can the opponent get back Restoration Angel? Is that how it works? Ooh, baby. That's the dream. And Blink the Scale Lord. Yeah, this is uh this is going to be tough. And yeah, now the opponent has infinite power in play. I'll most likely just take my draw and concede here. It's just way too hard of a game to win. The opponent even has Palace Jailer on top. Ooh, that was a beating. That was definitely a beating. Going to be on the play here, so no sideboarding. Okay, let's see if we can not have our mana crypt. Spell pierced and just completely get our game plan halted, then we might have a shot. Brutal, brutal, brutal. Just guy with a lot of white creatures. And the resto, I mean, you'll play Restoration Angle. With the creatures I saw, you'll play resto no matter what. The first thing I thought was if it was like classic control and it was like Restoration Angel Kiki Cheeky combo. Um, but with what the opponent showed after that, it doesn't have to be uh to be that at all. Alright, let me try once more. Okay, the sand is cool. Turn one clamp, turn two. I have some options. Probably going to be Guardian. Turn 3 Storyteller, which is insane with Skull Clamp. There's also something to be said about if the opponent goes tap land, I want to dodge Spell Pierce and play Staff right away. Maybe that's how you play Magic. Instead of having the Staff pierced on the following turn. When it puts Council's Judgment in the graveyard, that's kind of interesting. Let's resolve the staff. I'm going to attack first here. Hmm. Yeah, just like Guardian. Wonder what I should do with the skull clamp. There's also the argument to not do anything with the skull clamp and use activate staff to draw a card. Maybe that's just better. Let's try that. Like keep our board presence. A braid. Demand answers. Got it. So I can draw a card there. And discards treasure crews to draw two cards. I really like I really like cards like this. It's so flexible and it helps like reanimation and other synergies. It's just like a good consistency card. Maybe the opponent didn't have their okay tap land. That makes sense. Um, let's see how I play this. I think I attack with 
this and in lists. So yeah. Scry two. There's a soul ring, but I don't think that card would be that strong right now. What about the Legionnaire? Sure, that's like serviceable. My opponent takes three. I'm ready if my opponent taps out to go Emperor. Let that resolve, then I'll play Emperor and do what exactly? Maybe just make it 2-2. I feel like that's totally fine. 2-2 Two -two token combos with staff. Okay, so it looks like like slowly and steady we're doing good things here. There's the Legionnaire. I'm going to put a counter on the Guardian. Hmm, okay. Mana Crypt. We draw the creature. That's fine. I'm trying to get in for six. Mm, so maybe I go Legionnaire land and just pass, get ready to draw a card with staff, get ready to get lost if my opponent twin combos. Hmm. I feel like I'm supposed to kill that card now, and, I'll, and I'm in good shape. So let's kill the Pester Might in response. Play around days or whatever. And then I'll draw to play around Hold Breacher, etc. Pass. I have a pretty big board here that it seems hard for the opponent to, to get out of. Thelus Conscripts. Okay. Take my walker. That works. Oh, my opponent can exile a tap creature. Then my opponent has to pass because I have a first striker. I get back my wandering emperor, so. <laughs> so this card combos with Kiki Jiki. I feel like we have to do something about that. Or at least try. Mm. How much damage do I have here? Seems like I have six and I would have had lethal if I had kept some of the mana sources, but that wasn't the case. Mm. So I'm losing to Kiki Jiki. Maybe the play is go put a counter on that, attack for seven, and then start clamping like out of desperation. That doesn't help against Kiki Jiki, it only helps against Splinter Twin. Let's see, does this combo with Splinter Twin? That's the question. It enters. Uh, yeah. Hmm, so that is a play against um, Splinter Twin specifically. I think it would make it a lot easier if I found something to also let's take, like just handle that one. Hmm, that wasn't the case. All right. So I don't want to lose to the combo. I'm going to crack Ranger Captain on my opponent's upkeep. Is that even viable? Yeah, maybe it is. Ugh, this is so annoying.
All right. The opponent had the, the Kiki Jiki. So that's an infinite combo. Hmm. Yeah, tough to say. I feel like if I. The turn my opponent Pester Mites, I have three mana. It is a play to go let your opponent like go for it and then you try and get lost. But the opponent can also untap for disruption. We saw game one, we saw a spell pierce, so that's basically why I wanted to kill it right away, and I felt like I was doing pretty well on the board. But the opponent had a second barrel and uh, got me in the end. That's what happens sometimes. All right, so we lost round one. Let's see if we can get a win on the board for round two. All righty, round two. Let's see if we can get a win on the board. Our hand looks decent, pretty good. Um, Potential, but no crazy stuff. And we're missing a color for this Othari, so it's kind of annoying. We already have five mana in our hand, but we want to draw, like, we want another mana source at some point. That is definitely a mana source. Um, so, funnily enough, I feel like I should just go, yeah, let's just go Hallow Blade, play a Soul Guide. With the intention to cantrip next turn. Set a resolve. So funnily enough, my opponent can bin something here that I can snag with Soul Guide. That didn't happen. Hmm. Red source would be awesome. Other like non-red lands would be terrible. Mind Twist would be awesome. We have some good things. Oof, this looks tough. This looked almost like a normal vintage match. Saga and Mox. Very tough to beat. Blade Splicer. So funnily enough, if you play like Blue White Artifacts, Blade Splicer actually helps that. Cool. So let's draw. Third path. Very, very, very strong draw. I feel like I just... Uh, no, not third... Uh, yeah, Lauren of the third path. Um, okay, so let's kill the Saga. Very, very good draw. I think it's good to pass here. If I'm putting on attacks, I can block and discard a card to give Indestructible. Ooh, Mox Opal is still on. Yeah, this looks like one of those days. This is... Uh, oof. So tough to beat. I, if I get the red source now, I guess I'm uh, the champ. That like, almost can't happen. Okay, so what if I go cycle, go garden, play garden, play usher? Yeah. If I was able to kill the car in that turn, I, w I think I would have a chance. Now it's going to be super tough, especially because the opponent's getting closer to colonnade activation. Yeah. Here's some more big boys. Wow. Yeah, that's just an unbeatable draw, I would say. The opponent got their Ursa Saga destroyed, but anything that happened after that was uh, a beating. Oof, very tough to beat. It looks like my in my opponent's deck, Mox Opal is close to power. Okay. We are really getting crushed here. Well, let's try again. Okay, turn two Hello Blade, turn three Ranger. Okay, I mean this is this is like if we play against uh like the fair end of the opponent's deck, sure. But if we get crushed like last game, no chance. I don't like this uh, boss on the upkeep. That is uh, where I come from. That means one thing. That means Ancestral Recall. No Ancestral Recall this time. All it's probably going to be a good draw later. Let's see. Mind Stone. Okay. So what I can do here is kill the Mind Stone and try and... Ooh, I draw a better alternative. Okay. Lauren is awesome. Kill Mindstone. 
Attack for three. Yeah, that's way better than killing it with touch. Touch is going to be good later for, like, a big creature, hopefully. Also, funnily enough, I can now blink my Loran. Or whatever it's called, Flicker. And also, Flicker my Solitude. Maybe that's the combo I want. Pitch Solitude, blink it. So I'm keeping up the pressure here. I'm disrupting my opponent. Opponent with a time walk. So time walk, sapphire, opal, saga. Yeah, I don't I don't like my chances overall against that deck. Fourth land. Hmm. Nothing. Okay. Any upkeep shenanigans by the opponent? Hmm. Let's transcend the clowns here and see. Okay. So my opponent is looking to exile this. So maybe I just blink it and have it survive. So that comes back. I also play a novice inspector. Yeah, this is decent. I have solitude to kind of clear the way. I can go. Re uh, Ranger Captain for forgot which one drop I have. Um, I, have, I feel like I have one more one drop. I'll check here. Ah, oh, it's the Usher. Okay. So that is now a 4 4 first striker. Sol Ring. Pretty darn awesome, if you ask me. Pretty darn awesome. Let's see. Um, put a plus one, plus one first strike. So let's play that. Let's attack Emperor. Yes. And I'm hoping my opponent blocks the three one. Um, so I go like this. Hmm. Am I supposed to? Yeah, I think I'm supposed to put a counter on that and call it to the 4-4. Four, four. Should be in good position now. Assault Monolith. And six mana. Balance. Arn. Got it. 3-3. Three, three. Sure. So let's draw. Mind Twist. Not very strong right now. Maybe put a counter on that. Double attack. Uh, Arn. Arn is dead. Develop the red land in case I draw Thari. Yeah, let's see what the opponent does here. They're ahead on mana, I'm ahead on creatures. Seed Shark. Seed Shark's a good one, no attack. Hmm. No thanks. Mm. So let's see. What can I do here? I can put a counter on. Um. Hmm. I wonder which one. If I put a counter on Hallow Blade. Uh, it's like Hallow Blade is the best blocker. Because let's say the opponent draws a random artifact, Box Opal off the top. 
Then I can still block and make it destructible. I don't think this mind twist is going to do anything. That's the thing. But, but maybe I'm wrong. Mm. Okay, I'll try this plan. Grow the inspector, attack with that. Ooh, what's this? Ah, nice. Okay, so stifle that ability. And no more warning emperor for me. Hmm. Yeah, now I can't attack. Now I have to pass. Okay, that was the opponent's last card. So I'm actually not in that great shape anymore, to be honest. I might easily I can easily lose this game. My opponent has a seed shark, so any. Any random spell? Yeah, that, that, that works as well. Oof. I'm in trouble. Let's see if the Seed Shark wants to play. Okay. The opponent is not playing around removal. Removal on the Tide Binder, that is. So let's try and draw that. We don't. Mm, okay. I'll try and race here, even though it's kind of unthinkable. The Saga I was really good in this situation. Opponent takes a bunch of damage. Play a 2-1 that doesn't really do anything. And I have the Mind Twist in hand. Now the opponent can start, like, not only making big creatures, but also growing the Construct token already in play. Saga and Karn are just so good friends. So even a random opal grows everything with two. One for itself and one for the incubator. Okay, I'll take seven here. Or eight. Yeah, th this was a this was a beating. I didn't I didn't really stand a chance. Now the opponent's gonna make one more guy go search up stuff. Have some giant creatures coming in, and yeah, that's just gonna do it. I don't have any I don't have any moves here. Let me just quickly pull up the list. Like this deck, once you're in like such a deep hole, I don't have like Parallax Wave or uh, Winds of Abandon. Which are like the, the normal white cards to dig out of a terrible situation. Oh, even retrofitter. Yeah, that deck looks sweet. All right, that'll that'll do it. We we got super 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 humbled, and uh, I didn't really stand a chance to be honest. I had a good match against Jessica Twin, like very back and forth, very tricky to. Put pressure on the opponent, but still not lose to the combo. Basically, what how the deck was like to play against an old modern, and then I just got outclassed by blue-eyed artifacts. The opponent showed time walk and double mocks, and uh, yeah, I, I, my my mana crypt and, and soul ring didn't didn't hold a candle to uh, to that, and yeah, that's just what happens sometimes. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and even though I got completely demolished, I I surely enjoyed playing. Sometimes it's just awesome to you know see. Both sides of the coin. Sometimes you grind people out with the white deck and you feel like a genius. Sometimes you get destroyed and you start questioning uh, everything you believe in when it comes to draft. So, yeah, Cube offers a little bit of everything. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time, guys.